Welcome to Spider-Man 3. And I know this is a cinema sense thing, but over three minutes of opening credits? Come on! Also, this movie takes place after Spider-Man 2. Fucking duh, but like the Tobey Maguire one, okay? Which I watched many moons ago, but have not rewatched before making this video. Cause I'm a dumbass. But I'm hoping my memory does me a solid and fills in the blanks. You hear that, brain? I got you, homie! On to the movie! We got Peter and James Franco at a Broadway show that MJ's performing at, and after she's done singing, Peter goes to James and he's like, yo, we gotta talk, bro. And he's like, nah, nothing to talk about my daddy d because something happened i don't remember what it was <laughs> whatever peter tells mj that she was dope and then james comes out of a fart canister contraption peter and mj now stargazing on a giant spider web and like are they stuck to it are the sticky bits only the tips of the spider webs i feel like they should be stuck to it anyway they do some smoochy smoochy some shit falls out the sky and then some black goop comes out of it and sticks to peter's moped when they leave cut to some dude run away from the cops he just escaped from prison then he makes it home puts on a blue screws t-shirt that is the blue screws t-shirt Right? Oh, give me a sec. Yeah, it looks pretty close. Wait, who the fuck is this guy? What did you do to Blue Screws? Actually, it's pretty fucking accurate now because, you know, it's blue. But still, he breaks some bread. His wife comes out or his ex-wife, whatever, doesn't matter. And they have an argument which wakes up their sick child. Then he leaves because the 5 is coming around. Cut back to Peter. He's at Aunt May's house, right? And he's telling her that he wants to marry MJ. And she drops some wisdom on his stupid little ass. Sad Uncle Ben time. Then she gives him her marriage ring. Marriage ring? It's wedding ring, wedding ring, right? So he leaves and on his way back, some dude in the fucking hoverboard swoops in and takes him out on this James, right? Oh, man. He, oh, I get it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm, 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 oh, it's, I'm, it's all coming back to me. He's Green Goblin's son, so he's like, I don't, I don't know what his name is, his comic book name is. He's like Little Booger, okay? He thinks he kills that. Okay, so I get it now, I get it. So James picks him up and they have a big ass fight. Or not big ass, it's slow key fight, right? But he still does some spidey stuff, which should have been seen by everybody on the ground. Because at many times he's super close to the ground. It's not that low key actually, because dude rips a fucking chunk of building off and then shatters it. Which, by the way, not only do the occupants of this apartment have a heart attack and major renovation plans, but the chunks he shattered this wall into are nowhere near small enough to be inconsequential to the people below. Just saying, people are fucking dead and cars are destroyed. They fight some more and actually take the fight somewhere though people can't see him like in a fucking alley. Peter does some cartoon shit on James' ass and he goes bing boom splat. So he's kind of fucked right now. So, so Peter takes him to the hospital. Then we cut to Blue's clues. He's on the run, right? And police are on his behind and he evades them by jumping into this testing facility then drops into a pit where a bunch of lab coats are about to do some movie science and some sand when they notice that something's in the pit and they're like, probably a bird. It'll fly away when we fire it. Up. Yeah, probably. How very scientific of you, Mr. Science Man. This is a testing facility research type place, right? So you gotta have a, like a camera pointing in that pit or some other way to actually look inside before making the stupid assumption, you dumbass. Like, look at these guys. You just tell me this fucker's staring blankly into an empty wall? Fuck no. He's probably looking at some screens or like maybe even a, a see-through glass into the pit, like to tell what's going on in there. Moving on. They turn on the thing with the dude inside and he turns into fucking sand. He gets vaporized or sand eyes or whatever. And the cops can't find him, but don't worry, cause Bruce Clues ain't dead. He's just turned into sand. He now is Sandman, and he remakes himself the next morning and grabs onto a locket his daughter gave him, which makes me ask, like, why the fuck it didn't get sandized? I mean, if it's cause it's metal, then his belt buckle shouldn't have been sandized either. What are the rules here, man? Cut back to the hospital, and James is up, and he is good. He's a okay, but he lost a bunch of his memory from that Bing Boom Bop, right? He lost the memory all the way back up until Peter supposedly killed his dad, right? Which is super convenient for Peter. Then next day comes and MJ is super sad because she got bad reviews on her Broadway show and she goes to complain to Peter. He's like, don't worry, I get it, I'm Spider-Man. Do fuck your Spider-Man shit for a second, I, I'm sad. But then that police radio goes like, people, people, oh, we got an oopsie happening at 69th and Dickhead Street. So Peter puts on his Spidey suit in a millisecond and jumps out the window to go deal with oopsie. Turns out a uh, crane's going ape shit. And hey, Gwen, you see that giant metal beam coming towards your building? Yeah, how about you don't move towards it, you fucking delinquent. Well, Whenever Spider-Man does some crap, and then we go to the Daily Boogle. And this desk joke is obviously funny and uh, a classic, no doubt. But if you're trying to watch his blood pressure, this jump scare of a fucking desk is not helping. Anyway, skinny Brock Lesnar's trying to steal Peter's thunder at the Daily Buggle. And Boss Man's like, all right, whoever gets me a picture of Spider-Man doing some criminal shit, I will give him a job. Then we get a Stan Lee cameo, rip in peace, my man. James gets home safe and sound, and MJ goes to rehearsals and finds this other lady, and she's like, who the slut? We replaced you because you suck. Eat my ass, Donovan. Then we got this big ass party where Spider-Man's supposed to receive the key of the city, which I never understood. Like, how can a city have a key? Is there like some giant door? 
or something. Also, how the fuck did they coordinate this with Spider-Man? Did they just make an announcement and hope he saw it and showed up? And what if he didn't see it or just didn't want to show up? Like, yeah, I'm good. Actually, I'm good. Nah, I'm like, he's, you see any pox in this fucking suit? Nah, man, it's fucking, I'm wearing tights, man. Shit's fucking hard. Spandex shit, nah. Anyway, Spider-Man standing on the edge of a building without his fucking mask on. Fucking moron. Dude, this is Spider-Man parade. Everybody's gonna be looking for you. They got cameras. Some of them even know where you're swinging in from. Fucking tampon. But don't worry, the retardation does not stop there because after he swings in, everybody yells at him and is chanting for him to kiss Gwen. Everybody except for this kid. Yeah, man, listen to the fucking kid. Don't kiss her, man. Your girlfriend's right there. Ah, oh, you fucking cunt. So MJ gets sad. No shit. But there's no time for that, all right? Because evil Sandcloud. Sandman has been beating some cops up, and now he's on his way to steal a truck full of cash. So Spidey Boy goes to stop him. The truck crashes. He saves the two dudes in the truck, and the Sandman gets away. Stop taking your fucking mask off on top of low buildings, god damn it! Next up we got Peter and MJ at a fancy restaurant where he plans to propose to her with the help of a funny Frenchman, but she's all like, I'm fucking sad, I get it, I'm Spider-Man, no you fucking don't understand shit, okay? But then, ooh, Gwen shows up and she says hi, then leaves, and that's when MJ snaps, she's like, who did, alright, so, you don't understand how I feel, and how this bitch comes along, she's just girl Why from class, man, talk to both of you, shut the fuck up, okay? I can't believe I have to do this, okay, look, you are a self-centered little star. And you are a convoluted asshole, okay? Listen, communication is key in a relationship. Just fucking tell him you got fired. And you stop going around kissing other girls, you narcissistic little prick. Fucking hell. Simple shit, guys. Simple shit. It's basic ABC shit, alright? God. So MJ leaves sad as shit and he doesn't propose, obviously. But after that, the cops tell him and Aunt May that the real color of Uncle Ben is not this guy, but Blue's Clues. So he's mad as all heck, right? And he sits in his bed, just like dreaming and we're listening to the. What was the thing? What was the thing? I just said it before, like a few minutes ago. The police radio, right? <laughs> so yeah, he's listening to that to see whenever Blue's Clues comes on the radio. You remember that black space goop yet yeah, has remained dormant till now and jumps on Peter, consuming his suit, you know, being one with his suit, and he has an orgasm and turns into emo Spider-Man, who is stronger and better and more confident in his abilities and all that shit, right? But when he gives a sample of that black goop to his doctor, or university professor or whatever, professor tells him, don't come near that shit because it's dangerous, okay? But he's like, fuck that shit, I live on the edge, and he goes after Sandman in the black Spidey suit. And he fights him, the guy fights back, then Spider-Man flushes him down the sewers with a giant pipe, which Blue's Clues had all the time in the world to avoid, but he just stood there like a fucking moron, so whatever. Peter walks away from that fight and he sees himself in a mirror and he's like, oh yeah, I'm emo, Peter now. Then he yells at his landlord and takes the suit off. Goes to Aunt May where she drops another wisdom bomb on his ass. MJ hangs out with James, they dance, they make food, they kiss, and they're like, oh, we should not have done that, we should not have done that, oh no, 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 I have to go, I'm so sorry, no, don't go, oh, I have to go. After she leaves, James has a bunch of flashbacks and hallucinations of his old papi chulo and remembers how he thinks Peter killed his dada so he kidnaps MJ and forces her to break up with him and break his heart then he meets up with Peter to tell him how they kissed and she told him that she got fired from that job and didn't tell Peter and now they're a thing and he just rubs it in his face like fuck you <laughs> then Peter leaves sad his balls James looks back and like hey hey fuck you and then you know, doesn't vanish he's a magician Woo. later that night Peter shows up as emo spider-man at James's house and he expects him you know to have a big ass fight which ends with Peter sitting James' ass down. Then Peter, one last ditch effort to fuck Spider-Man up, throws one of them goblin splody balls at him, but Peter's like, no you, reverse Uno card, fucker, pew! And the exploding ball fucks up James instead. After that, Emo Parker goes to the Daily Bagel to expose Brock Lesnar for photoshopping Spider-Man into a bad guy, which gets Brock fired. Then he asserts his dominance on Boss Man by being a douche and uber fucking confident. Then he struts around town, supposedly impregnating women with his fucking finger guns, <laughs> buys his suit, then air humps a bit, and takes Gwen Stacy out on a date to a bar where MJ now works as a singer slash waitress to flaunt his new date and dance with her in MJ's face, but he just ends up pissing off both girls. Gwen leaves and he goes over to MJ and she's like, what the fuck is your problem, man? Then security tries to escort him out, but he, you know, he's super strong, emo Spider-Man, so he just fights the security. Some more security comes onto him and he just pushes them all off one by one until MJ comes along and he pushes her off too, by accident. And he's like, what have I become? Oh no! Don't look at me! Don't look at me! He depresso espresso right now, so he goes up to a church bell tower and starts trying to rip that fucking suit off, just making him evil, with the help of the bell, which makes loud noises that irritates the black goop, which drops down onto Brock, who was there, praying to God to kill Peter Parker. He sees him from all the way down there. How the fuck? I don't know. Peter's successful in ripping the suit off, and he's now naked. All the goop drops down onto fucking Brock, and he becomes Venom. And what's Peter's thought process here? Like, okay, you're gonna take the goop off, now what? I know, I know you're exhausted, man. You're probably exhausted from taking all that 
evil goop off. But are you not gonna at least try and go after it and contain it? Clearly not. He just goes home and fucking takes a sad shower and sits down in the corner like a little bitch. And then Aunt May gives him a visit to see how he's doing and drops some more wisdom on him. Me, you know, Aunt May, she's like a, like a, you know, like a ball of wisdom, man. Cut the Sandman and Venom making a deal to take down Spider-Man together by kidnapping MJ, making a bunch of webbing on some scaffolding or like a, on a skyscraper, suspending her there in a fucking taxi and luring Spider-Man to them. But what I don't get is why he didn't write Peter Parker stop us if he can because Brock knows his secret identity so you'll be revealing it and luring him in at the same time two birds one stone y'all villains are fucking stupid anyway Peter sees that on TV so he puts the spidey suit on and goes to James to ask for help who is not dead although a grenade blew up right next to his face he's not dead he's still alive he's just fucked up scarred for life and when Pete asks for help he's just like piss off Mike so Peter leaves and this guy Alfred comes along and he's like uh, I cleaned your father's wound the day he died and the blade that pierced his body came from his glider there's no question that he died by his own hand. Which is a smart choice of words because that could mean anything from that he killed himself or Spider-Man used the glider to stab him and kill him. Which technically still holds because he made the glider with his own hands. You know, but uh... What the fuck do you wait so long to say this? What, it's only getting out of hand now? Doesn't matter, spider man swinging his way over to MJ and USA, USA. He launches up to MJ, but Venom and Sandman are there. They get a hold of him and start double teaming him, right? He's getting fucked up, but RKO out of nowhere. James comes in with his goblin balls to help out Peter and make up with him. They get MJ to safety and James takes on Sandman and he uh, puts him down temporarily. I don't know how, he's fucking sand, but yeah, whatever. Meanwhile, Venom was fighting Peter and he got him on the ropes, but James finished up with Sandman and saved Peter then he does it again this time sacrificing his life for him wow what a guy Peter breaks free from his bonds and uses a bunch of poles to make a lot of noise which he remember pisses off the goop from that church building he makes an impromptu cage around Venom and he keeps making more noise then he pulls Brock Lesnar out of fucking Venom and throws one of them uh, Pokemon splody balls inside there Brock cause he's a dumbass jumps back in they both pull up and disintegrate wait so hold on one of them Pokeballs can do that and that but can kill James when blowing up literally no more than one foot away from his face. Yeah, alright, sure, sure, whatever. Blue Slew shows up and he tells Peter that he was stealing money to help his sick daughter and that killing his uncle was an accident. He didn't mean to do it. Peter forgives him. He sand clouds away. James dies. Sad funeral. Pete and MJ make up. The end. This movie gets a Pokeball out of a Goober Ball.